Hello there. We just created our first function component using Higgs. It's a very simple product component and it has one prop called name, which is required and is of type string. Okay. And then if you go to the show page, you can see that to use this product component, we used the dot syntax. Now, the only reason we were able to use the dot syntax here is because the product component is inside the same module as the templates. What if I had a separate component on a separate module? How can I use a component for somewhere else inside my product page? Let's open up a very special file called core components. Now, this file is very important. It's automatically generated by Phoenix. Every time you do a phx.new, you get this file. It's very useful. All of these core components that Phoenix uses under the hood to generate code for you. So if you try to use the generator for live view or HTML, uh, Phoenix is going to use the core components. So this is very useful. And I even recommend you to read this file from top to bottom because you're going to learn a lot about how to create more complex and composable uh, function components. And these function components, they can be used inside the live view, inside the HTML. So it's very important for you to understand how it works. Now, we're going to use one component specifically called button. So if you scroll down, there you go. We have a dev button that accepts and assigns. You can, you can see that we have a bunch of attributes here. So this is a function component. And I want to use this inside my product show page. How can I do that? It's inside the shop module dot core components uh, module, correct? And not inside the product HTML. So our, on our show page, we cannot use the dot syntax. We need to type the name of the module to use an external function component. So I'm going to type shop web dot core components dot button. All right. If I do this, is it going to work? Let's see. We got a warning here. If you hover the mouse on top, you can see missing required slot, inner block. What is going on? Let's go back to the core components. As you can see here, what are the required props? We have these three props right here. There's no required true, so we can ignore them, but I can see a required true on slot inner block. Now, if you have some React experience, you can quickly guess that this is the children from React. And instead of using the ATTR function, you call this lot. So whenever you see a slot inner block, that means that this function component is expecting a children. And you can see this is how you render a children using the inner block, okay? So if this is expecting a children, I cannot use this syntax. I need to do something like this. And then here, now I can type whatever I want here, like click me. Oops, I need the space here. Nope. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Is it here? What am, okay, yeah, sorry. This uh, forward slash always, makes me confused. Let me close the warnings. Okay. So if I go back to Google Chrome, whoops, close the documentation. I need to restart the server. Oh, the server is running. Okay. I am on the product details page. Okay. We have game Skyrim and the component click me. Nice. Now this button does nothing, but this is how you import a component from another module inside your page. All right, but I kind of lied to you. Why? Because the core components, they are so important that you don't need to access it like this. You can simply use the dot operator. And you might be thinking, whoa, this works. 
But how? The button is inside another module. How is the core component auto imported here? How? So this is a good exercise. Now stop the video. This is my recommendation. Go back to the product HTML, stop the video and try to understand where is the core components being imported. Because if I can use just the dot operator, that means that it's being imported somewhere. Where? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is this. If you go back to the shop web macro, we're calling this HTML function. Let's inspect that function. Go back here. Let's try to find def HTML. All right, let's see what's inside. Apparently, we're using uh, phoenix.component, and this is mandatory. If you want to use Higgs and have a function component, you need use phoenix.component on top. So we have this. We're importing a couple of functions from the Phoenix controller, and we're calling another function called HTML helpers. Interesting. Let's check this out. Okay, this is the HTML helpers. We are importing phoenix.html. Nice. And there you go. We are importing shopweb.core components. Awesome. So the core components, they are so important that this is automatically imported for you. Now, of course, if I remove this, I should get a warning somewhere here or not. Let me try to refresh the page. There you go, undefined function. Yeah, things tend to break because I no longer have access to the button component. Unless I go back here to my product HTML and I create another local button component, this is going to work. But right now I'm trying to access a button component that doesn't exist. So I need the shopweb.core components to make it work. That's why any component here that you want to use. So like, I think there is a, an icon component dot icon. Let me see def icon. Yeah. Uh, this component is very useful, the icon component. So if you want to use it on your uh, product page, you can simply use the dot operator instead of typing the entire module name. So actually there's another very useful component called back. So this is like a back button and we need an inner block that's required and we need a navigate. You can see an example usage here. So to use the back button, you need to run it like this. So I'm going to command C this and then instead of using the button, I'm going to use the back. Now we're using the verified routes. And then the verified routes are telling me, hey, I cannot find this route forward slash posts. I don't know what that is. So here we are inside the product details page and I want to go back to the products listing page. This works. So if I go back here, ooh, very nice. We now have a back to posts. And actually I don't want to type back to post. It's back to product listing. Okay, if I go back, back to product listing. If I click here, we go back to product listing. Very useful. So this is how you can use core components. I highly recommend you to read the entire thing because, I mean, it's very useful to understand how to create a composable component. If you want to have like a multiple children, there is a way to define multiple slots inside a function component. So I highly recommend you to read this file, especially because we have examples. So if you don't understand how the inner slot works, you can simply see the example and kind of uh, guess how it works. So it's a very good learning experience. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.